King. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope the stream is live. I hope you guys can all hear me. Um, let me fill my glass with something to drink before we get fully into it. There we go. Got that ready. Alrighty. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all again for joining. I hope you are having a great day. Um, so, uh, busy week for me again. Um, so, only had a little bit of time on uh, on working on a few things, and mostly I have been working on stuff outside of my space game. I um, actually spent some time tonight uh, getting a few things in the OpenVR plugin, uh, rounded off around the uh, actions implementation. Um, so, I'll probably be doing a video about that pretty soon. Um, now that basically the whole system is in there. Um, so yeah, it really needs some uh, some introduction, I think. And I think I'm finally ready to uh, to do that. So uh, watch out for that happening soon. Um, I've also finally set up that I can use my Rift on this computer as well. Uh, because I want to continue working on my object interaction um, tutorials. And I was using the Rift for that. Uh, so that whole project is set up to use the Rift plugin. Um, so that's, uh, that's all ready to go pretty soon. Oh, I hope the stream is working properly. Um, yeah, it should be good. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure everything is working because for some reason it is doing something weird over here. Let me have a look. Uh, copy that. Just bear with me for a second. There we go. Yeah, always first a commercial to get to get out of the way. So yeah, it's all working. So I'm not sure why it was complaining. Anyway, that's all good. So. Anyway, hello VP, welcome. All right, now it looks like it's uh, come back up. It looked like, like my stream just dropped out for a second. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, so yeah, uh, as I was saying, so um, so yeah, um, I am planning on um, doing some more work on the object interaction um, project. Uh, what else is new? Uh, my chair. <laughs> for those of you guys who follow me on Twitter, um, I finally got a new chair. I hope that means that uh, we have a little bit less creaking on stream because my old chair was getting uh, getting very old and very noisy. Um, hi Sima, how are you going? Good evening. So yeah, um, so what else happened this week uh, that is interesting to mention? Uh, oh, I got uh, I got featured in a video on a GD Quest channel, which was really cool. Uh, GD Quest did a really cool video um, where he introduced eight of his uh, um, well eight Godot um, tutorial creators on YouTube uh, that he recommends to uh, to his viewers. So it was nice to be uh, mentioned along uh, seven other really great channels. Um, so go check out GD Quest. Go check out that video. Um, He's, uh, he's doing some really cool stuff lately. Um, so yeah, definitely go and follow him if you aren't already. Um, what else is new? Uh, that I think is pretty much it. As far as news updates for the week. I don't think there is a whole lot of other stuff that is worth mentioning. Which country do you belong? Uh, well, I belong in the Netherlands. That's where I'm originally from. But I live in Australia nowadays. So uh, I am streaming out of Sydney, Australia. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't had any time this week to really do anything on the space game. Um, I've been busy doing a couple of other things around Godot. Um... So yeah, uh, let's just continue where we left off last week and um, and see if we can do some more nice things with our shader and improve on the way that that one works. Um, sure, let's go have a look 
had our friend our foe shader so there is the shield shader that we made last week with the logic that when we hit it we get a little ring i still want to um change the uh um the way that the mapping wraps around i'm probably going to change the logic for my whirly detection i'm actually wondering if that's not something that is worth looking into because right now our whirly texture is being created as a flat texture um but we could change this logic so that it is actually designed to be wrapped around the sphere and i'm kind of wondering if that is worth doing now because i don't really want to change the plugin itself i would then want to make something specific to our project and again i still want to add the logic here that we can actually save this uh image instead of calculating it every time that we start our application and potentially right now it's being calculated for every ship i'm not quite sure uh, whether it will reuse one texture or whether it will actually instance one uh, for each uh, each shield instance that we have so um so is that worth going into or would that be too distracting because i'm a little worried that if i start experimenting with this you guys are just going to see me uh, stare at my screen for half an hour trying to figure out the best way to uh, to change an existing shader for this um i might have a quick look because it has been a long time since i last looked at um at this code because basically all that this does is for every fragment um like I said last time, every color channel does a separate word check. And actually, if I go and comment some of these out, or two of these out, and only do the red channel, that makes that red, then we see just the one uh, whirly um, image. And this one is very low resolution, or very low detail, I should say. Just one octave. Actually, I want to have the, the highest octave right now. And that gives a better view of what a whirly texture is but here you can see that we have um, a re repetition I think this is upscaled by four so four on this side four on that side um, interesting that it is a, it looks really repeating I was actually expecting it to um, to have a bit more variation so that's probably something that you know would be useful to uh, to improve at some point in time and, and add some more octaves in um, so yes, uh, let's actually just focus on the red channel and have a look at what are the settings that we are putting in here. So we got our max distance here. Um, number of points. Is that just what it's looping through? Some of the word points. Right, right, right. Because I, I haven't looked at this for a long time, so I need to remember how did I build this. Um, so that's our material, which has a shader material, and then it has a whirly points array. Do I set that in scripts? I probably do. Max distance at number of points. Make random points. I do. That's really cool, actually. Um, I believe I was talking about that when we were writing the code for our uh, shield. So when we look at our shield right now, where is our shield code? Our shield shader. Here we go. So right now in our shield shader, we have encoded five points as five separate uniforms which means that we can only have five locations on our sphere where we got hit and then obviously we have that as a location and then an extra float as a time and we could actually change this to a vec4 and send through color data uh, and have just the uh, rgb part be a location and then the alpha part be our time which you know in the end it's just a floating point value that gets sent through um so we could optimize it in that way. But what I did in the whirly texture is that you can see that the input here is a sampler 2D. And a sampler 2D 
is our uniform input for a texture. So what I'm doing here, when I want to, you know, basically when you generate a whirly texture, you are, you're random generating a number of points in space. Um, and then for every fragment that you uh, render on the whirly texture, you are measuring the distance between that fragment and the nearby, uh, the, the closest point from that point array. So ideally to get a really good looking whirly texture, um, you want to have quite a few of these you know, control points, um, which would mean that if we want to random generate them before we ran, uh, generate our whirly texture, uh, we would somehow need to communicate those to our shader. And the way that we do that is by encoding um, those values into a um, into a texture. So you see that here for the number of points that I've defined on my uh, material, I am looping through um, that number of points that I want to create. So I've created a pool byte array. I've resized that uh, to be three times as big as the number that I need, because these are color values. These are bytes that I'm going to be sending through so that they don't have a whole lot of precision, but they don't need a whole lot of precision in this case. Um, if we were to be doing this for um, for our shield information, we probably have want to have slightly higher resolution. So we might use a 16 bit per color channel texture instead of an 8 bit per color channel texture. But here we're using 8 bits. <clears throat> so I'm building that. Um, that array, then I'm generating those points and then I'm creating an image from that and I'm using that image as the texture for the shader. And that way you can actually communicate quite a lot of data um, to your shader in a relatively efficient way. Um, so that's one really nice workaround to, uh, to get larger amounts of data into your shader. Obviously, this is not something you want to update every frame, but the wordy texture is only generated once, so that's not a real problem. Hi, Luciano. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> All right. So when we're looking, uh, when we're looking at this shader for our whirly texture, um, we're basically tracking the UV coordinates of our texture um, because we're in two D space. We're creating a point out of that where um, I'm actually moving the Z in here. That's interesting. I want, so this, I'm actually taking some of like a slice, like an, an angled slice through my data. I'm not quite sure whether that's really needed. I think that was overkill. I think I could have left that on, on zero. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a nice way to, uh, um, I think actually, no, I do that for, I think I do that to create slices if I want to have a, um, a, a 3D texture, because I, I was using this for clouds. And when you're rendering clouds, you will actually want to end up with a 3D texture. And I implemented this before Godot supported 3D textures. So what I was doing was I was actually creating a 2D texture with multiple cells, um, where basically you're slicing every Z direction image uh, and, and putting them side by side. I think that is what I'm doing here. And I'm just having a look at how I did it. I think I just encoded the Z value in, in the way. So I'm actually putting them below each other. Can I make that visible? That's a good one. Uh, why did I... There we go. I just want to have a look. If I go and play with this, so if I do here two, whoops, does that make it twice as high? I can't remember how I did that. I think I need to then make that bigger. Um, let's actually make this two. Hold on, I think I might want to do is this is a is this a tool script that I put on here? There's no script on this. This is just the So that's working on the viewport control. Okay, that's fine. Um So let's make this one double the heights. 
but now it just gets stretched out. Hmm. I can't remember how I did that. Like I said, I wrote this probably last year, something like that. So it takes a bit of a thinking about how, how did I do that again? Set texture size, new size, da 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 da. So here I'm multiplying it with the Z, that's cool. And then max Z, I am putting to the texture size of Z. So it looks like my shader isn't updating or hold on yeah of course i'm changing it in here but i'm not changing it here and now we can see it working so let's actually make this a little bit more so you guys can see what this is doing um bum, 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 bum. so this is now four so here you can see that we're now creating four slices of our whirly texture there we go. So we're now slicing our cube into four slices. And what I'm wondering about is what do I put the value in? Because it's just going to do set divided by max C. Yeah, because I'm just breaking that up. That's interesting. Yeah, because I'm just going to get the upper part of that. Yeah, because of course it's from zero to one, and then normally from. Whoops zero to one here but by making that times four this now becomes zero to four so my y goes from zero to one one to two two to three three to four but then i want to make sure that my z becomes uh basically this is zero zero point twenty five zero point five zero point seventy five and then of course it never gets to one because there's never a slice at the end um which then gives us our slices this is this is moving a quarter into our 3D volume at this point in time. And that allows us to create a 3D texture, which is really cool when you use a whirly texture, because that's where whirly textures are really nice to do cloud renderers and that sort of thing. That was the original reason why I built this, um, this thing in the first place. Um, so let's put this back the way that it was. Uh, we're gonna say max one there we go and now the question is are we going to are we going to change this to support a spherical slice because I think all the logic is there because we're already working on a 3d position or do I make a copy of this logic and make a specific spherical whirly texture logic I'm tempted to do that and then put that into um, into our project so that we don't lose it. Yeah, it's it's okay. I think we can uh, we can manage by just hacking it in here for now, and then at some point I'll make it a proper feature of this. So. Um, Okay, how are we going to tell it that we want a spherical one? Wow. Let's start by moving pulse here to just an empty vector. And then here we updating it. I'm gonna move result over here. Oh, that needs a semicolon. And then this is a bit ugly, but I think for now it is fine. 
Um, I'm just going to give that a zero. And if we set that to one, that means we want our spherical logic. So what we're going to do here is if do spherical is zero, we do the code that we have right now. Boom, boom, boom. Else we're going to write some new code to do our logic with. All right. Now, before we write that, I want to make sure that we can set that through our code. So that's going to be over here. And in this case, I'm going to say export var do spherical. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to make that false. Uh, set get set do spherical. Now, I wrote this when I still thought that I always needed to add a getter as well, which is not needed. Um, so let's just put this at the end. Here we go. Funk dunk new do spherical and none of this has any of the uh of those as well but you know for now we'll do that you do spherical and then in here we just i'm going to copy that boom I need to go and turn you off. I will figure out who tried to message me later. I am in my stream right now. Um, did we call that just spherical in there as well? I can't remember. But of course, here it needs to be an integer. Uh, can we do this notation in Godot? I can't remember. Well, it's not complaining. It is complaining. Okay. Um, you know what? We'll just do if do. I'm sure there's a shorter notation, but I can't remember what it is right now. There we go. Now it's happy. So if we have the spherical turned on, we set the value to one and also set the value to zero. It's dirty, but for now, just to have a quick solution, it will do. Now, obviously, that means that now we need to go and set our starting value there because as always our properties are set before our ready function is set which means that our properties are set before we have our material information ready uh, so we need to update that again all right let's try that thank you for that suggestion so uh one if do spheric spherical Thank you. Uh, else zero. Okay. Does that work? Oops. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not complaining about it. So let's see if uh, if that does the thing that it needs to do. All right. So again, in here, we're going to go and test whether it works by putting that to one. Obviously, right now it's going to be one color because we haven't actually um, implemented our logic. So what now happens is that we're sampling the position zero, zero, zero. We're sampling the same position every time. So all the distances are the same. Our really texture logic is not working. Well, instead that we're going to do here is a spherical projection um, based on our sphere having a radius of one. All right. So for X, that is going to be really easy. Um, so the center is going to be, let me think, which way around is that always? Um, do, 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 do. Um, I think, okay, X is, I hope you guys can't hear my kids in the background because they are playing, they are playing, uh, pistol whip in uh, in the other room and they seem to be having a lot of fun <laughs> uh okay so let me think again so uh, x is going to be um doo -doo 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 -doo. i always forget which way around it is um let's actually go and get our uv calculated properly first 
Um, do we need to have that? To... No, I think I can just do a float. X is um, is that cos? I always forget. U V X times Y. Um, come on, Bass. You've done this a hundred times before. Why can't I think it through right now? Um, don't I have pi in here? Surely Godot has pi in the shader. Godot, shader, pi. Pi is not defined in shaders. Really? Hmm. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Isaac Remnant, and I am shocked that no one's taking this issue up. I don't know. Let's go, and uh, really, I can't copy this. Thank you. I, did, I just want to copy this value. Come on. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. We'll just put this up here. Boom. We have pi. <laughs> um, all right, so pi times 2.0, I think, because UV goes from 0 to 1. Very good. All right, so float z will then be up. This might be the other way around. I always forget. This is not complete yet. We're just doing rotation around one axis right now. Um, and actually, let's go and say float y is 0, 0.0 for now. And then pos is back 3 x, y, z. Boom. Let's see if it does already something. Expected constant before constant definition. Really? Okay. Let's make that a constant float then. If it wants that. There we go. Boom. Okie doke. So, now we have that, okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Always forget which way around this is. Um, I think this needs to be cos oops, uvy times pi because that's only halfway around the circle, not all the way around the circle. Uh, is there anything? Else? Oh, yeah, capital Y doesn't like that. All right, anyway, that's not correct yet because I think now this needs to be times. Pi, and I just do the same for this one. Alrighty, that should be a spherically correct really texture. Let's go and see how that looks on our shield and whether I screwed this up or whether I actually did this the right way around. Both are very, very possible. All right, so. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Oh, I put it. <laughs> I always forget that I need. Don't click that one. All right, spherical. Now this is probably something that I now need to go and reload before it actually takes into effect. So let's go and reload our scene here. That is staying uh, scarcely. Um. Does that update it? No. Okay, I think now our problem is that we indeed still have this in memory. Let me see. Um, -da 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 -da. There's my shield mesh over here. Because I bet you that our material is currently not being 
It has it over there, which is interesting. All right, so the thing that I right now want to do, um, did we just get the base color out of, get a really, that's really. So I think I just want to overrule that and just use the whirly. And indeed, that is all. So I'm just going to go and restart this. Because I had this problem before when we set this up originally, that whenever we um, we change the um, the whirly texture, the viewport, it's not actually triggering it to render properly. And I think it's actually the viewport texture that gets lost at that point in time, which is still pointing to an old texture, while we've actually created a new texture right now with new sizes and all that sort of stuff. Pi is pieing it all. Okay, that's, um, we'll try that out in a minute. Uh, because first I want to see if our whirly texture does what it's supposed to do now. No, we still have a beautiful one colored whirly texture. How come? So, max distance is that. 256, 2561, that's great. Do spherical is on. That is strange. That is strange. I just don't learn. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to here. Uh, let's first try out Pi. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Pi. 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 Does it like that? Does it still say unknown identifier in expression pi? So, uh, or is it pi with a capital PI? That's also possible. No, doesn't like pi at all. So, let's go and undo this. Unless I did something else wrong, which is very possible. And let's go and uncomment this one. Boom, boom. All right, and now let's figure out why is our whirly texture not being applied correctly. Now this, po I never learned. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how many times I'm going to do that uh, today. Um, where, no, not that one. This one. This one. Okay, so we do have our whirly texture here. So it looks like our texture is actually correct. So my guess then is, I actually wanna go and take that out. Okay, that became really bad. Um, B and G, did we still, that's it, we made it red. We didn't get the other. And actually in this case, I don't want that. I actually need to, let's go and do this and do this. And we're just going to get the red channel. Because remember, we are tiling it on the other ones, which is not what we want. So let's see what's happening now. Okay. So we definitely still don't have the right effects. Um, actually, one of the things that I want to do here, texture, shield, texture, UV1. I actually want the UV1. Um, We're just going to make that UV for a minute because it could be that the rotation is right now screwing it up. And it is. Because the moment that we re rotate, we're actually removing our center point. So we need a different way of rotating if we want our shield animated. We need to have a different way of doing that. Um, hmm. Bit of a pain. That is a bit of a pain. Um, well, 
actually, um, yeah, let's clean this up a little bit because that means that we, uh, well, we can do a double, I guess. Because this is definitely how I want it to work. The question now is how are we going to make it spin? I think the only way to do it is if we start using. Or do we just not spin it? That's also possible. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm as surprised as you are that uh, that pi is not a standard variable inside of the shaders, and it makes sense having it as small letters instead of capitals. Though that said, capitals, generally speaking, um, where did we put it? Oh, no, it's not in this one. Um, Generally speaking, is used for constants. Although in this case, in the shader, it doesn't really matter because our inputs are also capital. So um, again, we can take it either way. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised that uh, that that's not a standard built-in variable in uh, in our shader logic. All right. So okay. Now, when we look at our normal or our vertex in this case, it doesn't really matter. What we could be doing in this case, um, oh, how does that work? I just want to see if we can. Uh, let's actually. Um, I want to make this a back free and uh, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use the normal for this. I just want to copy it and then for my X. Let me think. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Yeah, because that will be the reversal of the R real logic. Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother with that right now. I think we are just going to take out this rotate. Oh, <laughs> um, so no, we're not going to rotate you. Actually, let's just. Oops, let's just leave this this logic here for now. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do use UV here. Okay. I do want this in there. There we go. And like that. All right. So now our sphere doesn't have those weird things over there. Okay. That's good. All right. And I'm going to think about what I'm going to do with that rotation because basically what we need to do 
Um, we can use a normal to recalculate our, um, our UVs. So we could take our normal and then rotate our normal and then calculate new UVs based on that. But I want to think through whether, whether that's something I really want to do. Um, actually, there's something else that we could do as a alternative. Let's see. So that would also work, I think. Not F mod. Mod. Mm. No. Mm. That would only work if we did I don't think I like that. It's an interesting effect, a color cycle like this, but yeah, and ggscript, I think it's math.py or something like that. So it is available. All right, I'm going to leave those things in there just because I want to think about if there is some sort of animation that I do want to do over time. But for now, I'm just going to leave the whirly effect in there like this. So let's go and have a look in game what that looks like when we hit something. I'm just going to leave my headset lying on the side. I just want to see what that looks like. We still have that weird issue where, where the texture here looks wrong. That one looks fine, but that one is... That's so weird. Because it's animating that even though we've taken all the time logic out of here. So I really wonder what, why it's doing that, where that is coming from. Oops. Oh, and we took the shield down because we still have too much strength in the shield. And this, this guy has the same problem. So I, I've got a feeling that has to do with the fact that we're, we're using the whirly texture on, whoops, I hit my ship there. I think that has to do with the fact that we've got the whirly texture used on multiple ships. So that gives us a good reason that we actually want to export this image. Um, hmm. Well, we can jury rig it, I guess. Just create a quick and dirty one. All right. Let's see. 
Um, okay. 512, 512 on. So I'm just gonna use the settings that I want on this thing. Oh, I made it a bit bigger now, but that's okay. Fifteen points, spherical, max distance point five. Actually, what does that do when I increase that? I've wondered about that before. Point one. Oh. Makes it more brighter, okay. Well, 0 0.5 looks like it's actually the proper value for that. Okay. Um, hold on. That also means that even though we're not using it, where are you? Chair. I do want to fix up our shader code and undo commenting out these. Let's make it all proper. There we go. All good. Really texture. And we're gonna add a button here. Um, no, we're gonna go and create a test scene for that. Sure, add-ons. Noise texture. Do I have something? Report texture. Good, so we're gonna just create a new scene. Make that a 2D scene, believe it or not. We're going to go and put a really viewport in there. Boink. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's actually add a preview in there. Texture rect. So we call that preview. Boom. And we're going to do a viewport texture. And it's going to be a worthy texture. And that might actually be the reason why we're having problems in our friend or foe um, implementation. Because our worthy texture is the last node in our list um but our mesh is all the way at the top and i remember that the order is very important we could test that just to see if it works i actually want to save this uh into noise textures and that is export really there we go and i probably might add a nice little interface to this at some point in time but I just want to see if we can go, if we move this one over here, let's see if that fixes our problem. Just, just as an interesting thing. I still want to add that save code in there. Hey, Rodzilla, how you going? Hey, Declin. Yeah, the visual shader is really, really cool. I actually want to do some more with it. Um, obviously here I'm writing the shader in code, but there's a lot of situations where it makes much more sense to uh, to just write a visual shader because the end result is the same. Um, you have a little bit more flexibility with a written shader, but in the end, the visual shader creates a written shader in the background. Okay, so that didn't make any difference, so that's not our problem. Um, but it's very powerful and there's some really cool nodes in there that just allow us to do things automatically. So why not? Um, I've actually written a few of them. Uh, I don't want a texture, but I just want a button. There we go, button. Call it export. And again, we don't really care where it is. We just put it there. Boom. Uh, we need a. Uh, we need a script on this thing. So yeah, I do want to do a lot more with visual shaders because they're, yeah, they are really cool. We can do some really cool things with it. Um, and I have used them in a few places. I'm not sure if I'm used, I've used them in this project yet. Um, because it just, it communicates much better what you're doing, especially for, <clears throat> you know, pretty relatively straightforward um, shaders. Um, it's much easier to communicate what the shader is doing. You know, you've got a texture, you plug it into your albedo input, it's it's very visual it's very easy well if it's in code you know the, the the uniform is up at the top of the script and then we're using it somewhere at the bottom and we're calculating the uvs in some way it's much harder um to to see what it is actually that uh, what we're doing 
So as far as explaining shaders, the visual shader is really, really nice. Um, visual scripting, on the other hand, is uh, something that I think Godot needs a lot of work, um, which is really a shame because there's a lot of people who uh, who would benefit from a better visual scripting language in, uh, in Godot. But, you know, it is what it is. All right. Um, I have to think, I've done this somewhere else. Where did I do this before? Um, did I do it in here? I don't think so. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Where is that code? Where is that code? Where did I put you? Environments. That's just a trust file. Did I put that somewhere in here? Panorama from Kitman. That is just a visual one. Did I put that somewhere in temp? That was my camera rig test thingy. That's not it either. So I wrote this bit of uh, or this this helper scene. Did I put it on mix? No, I didn't do that. Um, maybe I put it in assets. I think I put it in assets because I needed to have the sky map for uh, for the background for this game. So I actually wrote um, a little export for that. So where did I do that from? So that's for the planets. That's not it. That's not it either. Where did it come? Be a... No, those are beeps. Where did I do that from? Tyro, Skybox, there we go. Skybox scene. So I basically create, no, not 3D, 2D. I basically created this uh, this little helper thing where I'm getting a skybox that is generated from a website. Uh, so you have your left, right, front, for, uh, back, top, bottom images. And I'm turning it into a, um, got it? a panoramic. And then I've got a button that allows me to save that, and there you go. So, what I did here, oh, that's a cheat. <laughs> I just saved it under a fixed name. Um, you know what? I don't really want to waste too much time on that, so we're going to do exactly the same here. Uh, that needs to become a whirly viewport. So we're going to get the texture from our whirly viewport. And then converting that to an image data. And we are going to save that as a whirly.png. There we go. Cool. All right. Now we can use that little button to just play this one scene. And we can press our export button and then we quit. Boom. And now we need to go. Over here, over here, add-ons, noise texture, did it save it here? No, it probably saved it in the root, didn't it? Oops, space. It saved it over here. So let's go and move that into our assets folder. We're going to put it in misc. Maybe. Yeah, we'll throw it in misc. There we go. So now we have a spherical whirly texture as an image ready to just be used. So I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. Don't need you anymore. Don't need you anymore. Um, and now we should be able in our shield mesh, we should be able to go to our material. And now uh, we just say load assets misc. Whirly, boom, there we go. We've got our whirly texture in there, which now means that we no longer need our viewport. Goodbye viewports. Did we do anything in here with it? I can't remember, I don't think so. All right, and there we have it. Now we are just using a texture instead of rendering something. Hey, Sarah Dev, I'm doing fine, thanks. I hope you're good too. 
Uh, half the time, I don't know what I'm doing either. So that's fine. <laughs> that's how we learn stuff. All right. Let's see if this now actually looks proper. Now, we still see... Our first one looks proper and our other ones don't. What are we doing wrong? So there's something else that is screwing it up when we have multiple instances of this. All right, so what could that be? I wonder if it has something to do with these. Oh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Why does that keep changing? Hang on. So... Oh, is this a tool script? This is a tool script. Okay. In already, we're doing that. Let's sign. And we're adding our delta in and we're updating it. So we're starting that from the start. I don't think I want to do that in my tool script. Because we had that logic in there when we... When we were testing. But because now we're doing this and we're con continuously doing that. I don't think I want to, to do this at all while we're in our editor. Don't do this in our editor. Boom. There we go. All right, we need to reload that so that it gets fresh data. All right, so. Let's go and make these all zero again. There we go. Okay. Now the other possibility here, which actually kind of makes sense in this case, even though we've got this set as local to scene, I wonder if it is. I'm wondering if we aren't getting into trouble Because, because we're sharing the same material. It might be because Godot tries to reuse materials, right? So if we have a single material, it tries to reuse that. And that's why we've got our local to scene on. It's supposed to then create a instance just in each scene that we've got. And I'm wondering if that's actually working. It might be that it's actually not doing that. Okay, now we don't care about anything except our base color here. Do we already have our base color defined here? No, we don't. All right. I think we are going to create um, our material on the fly. I think we're gonna go and do that. I think that would be a good idea. So. Shield material shader. Right now we are loading that in our ready. So instead of getting our server material here, we're going to create a new one. All right. Let's do that. Let's go and take that one out. Um, actually, before we do that, I want to safeguard my color. So we're going to go, can I zoom in for a sec, there we go. All right. Yeah. Export color for shield color. This way we can also change the shield color between our friendlies and our enemies. That's kind of cool. Um, All right. 
I just wanted to uh, have some sort of default color. So that's an ugly gray. Because now we can just go in here, and we can go in here, we can go in here, we can go and copy this guy. And we're going to go and paste that over here. Boom. And we have our default color now set up there. All right, cool. Sweet. Then, now we can go and comment this out, and instead of that... Yeah, so that's what we're building, uh, Sarah Dev. We, uh, uh, but there's a, there's a weird uh, bug that I'm trying to fix that I think is caused by the fact that we have... Um, what do you call it? Drop the name. Uh, because we are reusing the same material on uh, on everything. So, um, shader material. And once we fix that, hopefully it will work consistently. There we go. So we're going to create a new sh shader material. And I don't want to give it parameters. I'm not quite sure why I did that. Uh, then our shield material shader needs to be preload. I'm not quite sure if this is a smart idea. Yeah, there's too many in here. <laughs> uh, it's in here, isn't it? Yeah, shield shader. I'm just going to go and drag that in. Boom, there's our shield shader. All right. And then, really the only setting we care of at this point in time is set shader param. Um, uh, doesn't auto load that. It's always a bit of a shame. How's it called? I always forget. Base color, and that's going to become our shield color. And now we do shield mesh set service material zero shield material. There we go. So we're creating a new material for this instance. Um, there we go. And that's even happening when we are, where are you? I've got too many folders open. There we go. Uh, I don't want this one open. That even happens when we do this, which I don't really care too much about. Although, ah, we need to set our texture. <laughs> we now create a new material. And those are all basic defaults, but we haven't set our shield texture. Okay, that's fine. So, let's do that. Shield material, set shader param. Uh, what was it? Shield texture? Shield texture. And that also needs to be a preload. And we need to go, we do need to go there. Um, open it up and drag in our really texture. There we go. Boom. Alright. So here I am using preload for both the script. <coughs> Excuse me. For both the script and our texture because that means that uh, excuse me that means that our um, these resources are only loaded once and then every other instance they are reloaded so it's it's actually caching those loads which is kind of cool it also means preload also means that we are loading when the script loads not when the code is executed so these files will be immediately available to us. So let's see if we've done the right thing now. All right, let's go have a look. Now I'm gonna be really surprised if it's still wrong. Nah, that looks a lot better, I think. So now we have both of them looking proper. 
And there's that wave effect that we already created. Which is now working properly on both shields. There we go. Rule up my friendly friends again. And here then is a bit of a bigger one. So we can see a little bit better what we're doing. And here you can really see that whirly texture effect as well. Well, until we, uh, we destroy our shields. Um, and that is because we didn't reload our file after making these changes. That's always a downside of using a, um, a script. So now one thing that we could do just to, uh, just for fun, just to make it visible is going in here and well, here we can see that our shield is not being set up. That's fine. Oh, that's because it's black by default. How interesting. Why did that happen? I wonder. It's black there. But it's blue here. Weird. Wonder why it's having that problem. Hmm. Did we do something wrong in here? Shield color is just a color var. We don't actually need the semicolon, so let's take that out. There's no set get there. I probably really should, but... <clears throat> okay, so... Why are you giving me a hard time? Why is that not coming through? That is weird. Uh, just don't save. Check your screen, you know. You know what? Whenever it starts doing these sort of things, I like to just reload my project because that usually means that something stuck in memory again like I said that's always a problem with tool scripts because they are loaded into the editor they do tend to misbehave a little bit and now it's working properly okay cool so that was indeed the problem okay but now on our enemies on our bomber I want this guy to actually have a different color shield. Now we haven't put a setter there. Maybe I should actually implement that. I think that would probably be nice if we did. So export color da, 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 set get set shield color. Now obviously this is very likely going to get us back into the problem that we were just a minute ago where it's not um, Uh, where it's no longer loaded properly, but we'll deal with that um, when we get there. New color, and in this case, if shield material. Okay, and now we're gonna go down here because I actually want that. I wanna copy this guy. Um, that's not going to work right now. <laughs> Shield color. Because there's an error in my script and it doesn't do auto completion. Well, there's still an error in our scripts. And the reason there's still an error in my scripts is because we can copy that in. So I kind of like having these things in one place so that if we ever do some uh, change the variable name, we don't have to change them to multiple places. And obviously, anytime after our material is created, we can set that initial value. So, and maybe actually for just for nicety, just keep all those sets together. I think that uh, that works nice. So, that should mean that if we change this guy, well, it doesn't update yet because it hasn't loaded that script in. So, let's go and close you. Um, let's go back in here. Now we have the different shield color, but let's see if we change it. That's interesting. 
I had expected it to change right away now that we are doing that. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Set shield color parameter. That's going to be the shield mesh there. Material, set shader param. Get set, get set over there. Okay, so um, let's just see if it's again not kept that in memory. Yeah, we could probably uh, probably do a fade on that. That's probably not such a bad idea. Um, actually, I kind of like that idea. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, I just want to get the uh, see if the color change now works. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. Look at that. How cool is that? You know, this has got absolutely no practical function for uh, our game because this is only something that affects the editor. Um, but it's just so nice when you when you just do that little bit of extra work, um, even though it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really change anything. But just because now we can visually see how we're configuring something, we can see it immediately have effect on um, on our character, and we don't have to guess what it will look like. We can immediately see this is the effect. <clears throat> so yeah, I uh, I really like uh, like that. So uh, pretty cool. So um, I'm actually not against the fact that we 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 no longer have it animating. I'm actually not too bothered by that. Might eventually do something with that again, but I'm 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 kind of more happy with the fact that we now have a really texture. Um, call it um, that we have a properly UV mapped uh, I think that's actually more important but yeah all good so yeah I'm going to uh, I'm going to try Saradev's suggestion I actually like that idea so what we're gonna do is as <clears throat> excuse me as our um, our ring expands around our hit ring. We're going to actually start fading it out. And that's going to be pretty easy to do, I think. Um, so we come back into our shield shader. Now again, we don't have our uh, our option anymore to, to test it, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I'm also going to go and take these guys out because I don't think I'm going to be putting that back in again. We're gonna go take that out. We're gonna go take that out. <clears throat> All right, and that means that we don't care about these guys anymore. All right, so now our hit distance is how far away we are. What we actually need to do is hit time. So, um, what did we do here again? I, um, that's right. So when we, I did this last week. <laughs> I have to remember back to last week. So when we hit our, um, our shield, um, we reset our hit timer to zero and then we increase it by time. And the second thing that we do is we set our hit point. And actually one of the things that we really should be putting in here at some point in time is um, setting our hit point back to zero when uh, it doesn't really matter too much, but for now, because you know, it's going to keep increasing this and increasing this, it's going to be, it's going to keep calculating this even if there's nothing to calculate. Um, So probably we're gonna add a, a hit time smaller than to this. 
Doesn't really matter how much it is. Um, let's say five. That's actually already more than enough. Actually, you know what? I. Define it as a concept, shall we? Const max time is, let's say max time is two. Because we're just gonna say that after two seconds, it fades out. And we might actually need to make that smaller. We will see. Which means that we can now say, there's a max underscore time and there's max time, I forgot. Um, needs to have a type. It needs to have a type, float. All right. <clears throat> So we're gonna do that for each one of these so that we don't overdo our calculation once our hit time has passed. That's three. And again, eventually I wanna calculate all of this stuff in a texture, in an array thing. But for now we, and again, five is more than enough, I guess. You know, it takes three hits for it to, uh, <clears throat> to fade out. All right, so that does all that. Now that means that over here, our hit one value, depending on our distance and our travel goes from one highest strength to zero when there is no more strength. And all that we need to do here is fade that out. So the way that we do that is we do eight times, max time minus, Hit time one divided by max time. And that should fade, fade it out. Boom, boom, boom. 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 So let's see how that behaves and whether I did that right. Yeah, we could do a curve or something like that to, to make it look a little bit, you know, to have a little bit of control over it. But I am happy enough to make it work like this. Actually, I'm going to hit our enemy. That stays very strong. Now, that could be because we put our hit time to two seconds. I, either we didn't make it work, that's possible. But it's also that we put our hit time to two seconds, and I think it takes a lot less than two seconds for that thing to go around our thing. So let's let's make this 0 0.3, shall we? So that it fades out in 0.3 seconds. I don't think that it goes all the way around in that amount of time. We shall see. And if not, we know that we made a mistake. We did something wrong. All right. Oh yeah, now it dies out way too quickly. All right, that's that's too little. Let's make it double that. We should have a test shield floating around in space that's really big so we can really see what's happening. Maybe I'll add that in. And yes, it is. Uh, there's a lot of math involved. Although there's a lot of math repetition involved. And obviously, most of this I wrote last week. So if you want to catch up on that, have a look at the uh, recording from last week. It's a long view, though. It's a bit of a shame. I like that. That's That was a good idea. idea. I, I like that idea. That makes it look a lot nicer. All right. Okay, that's that. All right, that's that. All right, cool. All right. Hmm. So.
Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking about this next thing, because right now when we destroy the shield, it just, poof, it's gone. And I actually want it to sort of disappear. Um, and the same thing with the other way around is when... Um, When we regain our, our shield, you know, because obviously we've got to have a shield regeneration, then I want it to come back to life. Um, I think we're going to go and do the shield regeneration first. I think that is actually probably a good idea to, uh, without an effect, but just to have our shield regen. So, so we've got our shield enabled, we've got our max health, we've got our max shield and what we're going to do here is a we're going to add a shield regen factor and this is um how many shield points we're going to regain in a second's time up until our max shield Now this is some a value that we eventually will need to have some scaling with, um, because one of the things, and this is I think probably only important for the player um, character, where we're going to have power management at some point in time, where your ship has a certain amount of energy that it can expand, and you can decide whether that energy is going to go to shields, or whether it's going to go to your thrusters, or whether it's going to go to your weapons, and obviously. Um, Upping, you know, the amount of energy that goes to weapons decreases the amount of energy that goes to shields, which means that your shields don't regenerate as fast as um, when you uh, move all your power to the shield regeneration or, you know, thrusters if you want to go faster. Um, but I think that's going to be part of our AI logic and our AI, AI logic is simply going to calculate what the shield regen value would be for the power settings that the user or the AI has chosen. Uh, so I think it's good enough to just do it like this. And that means that in our process, it's probably a good place to do this. I think so. Hit uh, that's right, that's just all our, our checks. And then before we do anything over here, uh, we're gonna implement our shield regen logic. Let's put a uh, remark for this as well. Update our material. We're gonna be putting some more info in there. Um, increase our hit time. Gonna go over there, and this is going to be. Uh, um, this should never be false. Uh, okay, that's all good. So, what we're going to do here is shield. No, or is, I think it's a shield. Is it? Let's have a look. Um, so when we take damage, yeah, exactly. So we're going to give damage to the shield. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so if we have more damage and shield, which is true. Oh yeah, no, this is where if we still have more shield than, than that we hit, then we're just going to decrease the shields all fine. If our shield is bigger than zero, but obviously damage given is more than our shields, then um, we decrease our damage given because it, it goes through to our health. Uh, but I set the shield to minus 10 because I don't want it immediately to come back up um, when our regen is. So basically it'll take a second before the shield comes back up. Um, but it will come back up because it's just the generator is, is working. Uh, then again, the, the, the very next laser bolt, it would go down right away again. Um, and that's fine. But that's what I did is, you know, when the shield goes down, we get an extra minus 10 penalty on the shields. So in here, 
where are we over here what is this by the way oh that's just not ready that's fine probably need to do check shields then as well let me double check this check shields what does check shield do i think that's just exactly so we're gonna do some more logic in there uh that's fine so shield is and i want to clamp this shield plus shield regen times delta because we need to do it by size um that's not going to go below what it is currently but we want to make sure that it doesn't go above its maximum value so if it's minus 10 it's going to be between minus 10 and the maximum we're always increasing it so this it just hits hits a max probably do a max or a min function there as well but just gotten too used to using clamp <laughs> um and then we just go our check shields again sweet all right so so in our check shields right now the moment that our uh shields goes above zero um we do uh the disable of that and we immediately make, hide it and that's something where we're going to make a little bit more logic in a minute um, but I first want to see if our shield regen works. Can we link power of the laser with the fade number? Um, yeah, basically, you know, once I start doing power management, that is definitely one of the things that I want to do, uh, is if you don't give power to, um, to your weapons, and at some point you, uh, you run out of power on your weapons, and your, uh, your laser will stop working or it will shoot much slower. Come on. Um, but we're not at that point yet. All right. So our regen, you can see that's uh, working pretty quickly. Boom, coming back up, coming back up. Maybe our regen on 10 is a bit too much. I'm not sure. We don't have any indicators yet. So that's, of course, one of the things that I also want to do is that once this is selected is in our um, our little thingy over here that we uh, boom. There we go. <laughs> uh, that we have some sort of indication about the shield strength of our enemy. But yeah, this is pretty cool. So let's go and work on an effect to um, to actually make it disappear in ISO. So, um, that's a good question. How are we going to do that? Because basically I want a different effect when it disappears to when it comes back. And I think the way that we're going to do that is we're going to have a helper value here. Um... Hmm. What do we call it? Because the idea that I'm having is that we're going to have a value that runs from zero to minus one uh, when we are taking our shield down. So the moment that the shield goes down, we set it to zero, and then we increase time um, until it's gone. Uh, and then when it's minus one, it's basically disappeared. Um, but when we want to take it up, we're going to go the other way around. So we're going to go from zero to one. Um, Where, yeah, uh, where then when zero, it still disappeared, and once it hits one, um, it's there again. Hmm. 
yeah, I think that would that would work because that that gives us a way to uh, to move it. All right. So, um, why is my thingy so dirty? Anyway, um. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just trying to find a good name to give this. That's the problem. Um, I don't really want to call it Anim, but you know, let's just call it Shield Anim. Why not? Um, that's just going to be a float. At... No, that's going to be default one. So, minus one is Shield down. Shield going down, up, shield up. I think that is all that we need to do there. Okay. All right, so in check shields, we do that and we do that. Okay. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna give this a delta through there. Um, Floats, and we're going to give that zero when we're not changing that value. That's great. Which means that we're going to actually go and put delta in here. I'm going to go and move that code. Oh, what? There you go. Going to move that code into there. Uh, update our shields. Because obviously by default. We're not get, giving it a delta, so from all the other places, it's uh, it's not going to do anything. But this keeps our um, keeps our logic in check. So I want to do that first. Um, check if our shields are on. Blah, blah, blah. Then here we're going to say um, disable our collision. If our shields aren't on, boom. Okay, and then here we are going to go and um, shield on him. Okay, so if our shield is on, then we're going to. Go and increase our shield anim by delta. So we're going to give it a second. I think we need to add a factor in there, a speed. And we're going to go and work on that in a minute. But this is going to go from 0 to 1. And else we're going to go the other way around. So that's going to go from minus 1 to 0. And that means that if it's up, so our shields are up, it's 1. The moment the shield goes down, it starts at zero, and then we're going to ramp down to minus one. Okay, cool. And then this is now going to be shield atom bigger than minus one. So once they're fully down, that's when we hide our shield mesh because there's no point in rendering something that is invisible. Now we just need to make it do something. Well, before we do that, I want to give a factor to our delta. So, again, another export var, shield, um, um, anim time, I'm going to call that. Why not? So, let's say that it's going to take 0.2 seconds for it to go up or down. All right. Where are we here? So we need to divide delta by that, and that's actually going to scale it up in this case. Yeah, shield timer recharge, that might be a good name for it as well. Um, although that, that is already kind of captured by uh, our shield regen, I guess. Anyway. Um, okay. All right, 
So. Here we are going to be using a curve to uh, to do this. Okay. Um, so that can be another export var. Shield down curve. Curve. Yep, that's neither 2D nor 3D. Uh, shield up curve. Oops. So we're going to use a curve to make it go up or down, giving us a nice little look up there. All right. All right. So now we need to go and in our shield shader. Oh, it's over here then. We now need a factor that we can do. Um, I'm actually going to apply that to our base. Um, okay, I'm just going to make that a uniform over here. Uniform float. I'm going to call that boost. Um, and that's just going to have a default value of 1. So we're going to boost our color. And 1 means that it's just the normal color. So boom, boost. There we go. Sweet. All right. And that's the value that we're going to go and uh, and animate here. So I'm going to go and just initialize that here as one. And that now means um, That now means that we're going to go and set our shield. Oh, no. Always check if we have it. A little bit overkill, but that's fine. If we have our shield material, we're going to go and set shader param. Boost is going to be boost. There we go. So that's how we communicate that one. And now we're going to go and use our curves. Um, to do this so uh, shield now this is up so this is going to be our up curve um, and I always forget what that's called um, okay let's go and find that in our help that's where we have a help curve there we go it's funny that I use this a hundred times and then I completely forget what the value is or what the thing is. Interpolate. Yeah, that's pretty damn um, logical. Shield enemy. All right. And then here we're going to do our down curve, but remember this goes from zero to minus one. So we need to invert it. And then again, zero is up, one is down, and that's something that we need to make sure that we keep in mind when setting our curve. So, we crash. Well, let's see. How much have we lost? <laughs> I wonder why we crashed there. Um, hmm. Well, actually, I know why we crashed there, because we're doing stuff on tool scripts, and it does tend to get confused from time to time. Look at that. We lost quite a bit, actually. That's not good. Uh, we lost our whole boost code in here. Okay. Did we lose our shader code? I always hate this, because... We didn't lose our shader code. That's at least something. Okay. If shader. All 
Um, why are you not auto completing? I hate it when it doesn't auto complete. There we go. If. Uh, because it's called shield material. There we go. Shield material. Set. Shape. Ram boost. Boost. There we go. Boost is um, shield up curve dot interpolate um, shield nm. There we go. And then here we go on our down curve minus. And I think I already the other reason why this crashed is because we don't have a shield curve yet. So let's make sure we don't call interpolate on an empty object. That's probably why we had a problem. Okie doke. So now we need to set up our curves. And let's start with just a couple of very simple curves. So when the shield goes down, again, and here it's down, here it's still up. I want my max value to be a bit higher because I want to give it a peak. We're going to go and add a new point here. Now, is there a way that we can actually directly influence what that point value is? I think when we create this point, it is by default one. So we're going to keep that there. We're going to add another point here. We're going to add another point here. This needs to go to zero. This needs to go nice and high. So we're going to basically ramp it up straight away. And then we're going to go fade it out. So we just got to a blip and then we get a, a fade out. Let's see if that looks nice. I've got no idea. It might look horrible. But that's our initial one. Bake resolution of 100 should be fine. Um, let's go and do a up curve. So here, obviously, same deal. Let's give it a max of 5. Add a point at the end. We want it to be 1 at the end. Add a point here. So obviously we're going to start at 0 in a minute. But here we're going to have a little bit more fun. I want a few points in here. So starting at zero because it's down. Then I want to go all the way up. I want to give it a big flash. I'm going to bring it down again. In this case, I do want to go. Oh, OK, that's going to go like that. So I actually don't want to do that. I'm going to keep those the way that it is. We're going to basically give it a couple of blips. There we go. Down again. Up again. I have no idea how this is going to look. We will see. And seeing that we've got our. There we go. Ah, I don't want to do that. I want to move you. Okay, let's, do, let's leave it like that for now. Uh, we need. We might need to space these out a little bit because remember we moved it to three. So let's actually do that because. How did I do that? That's not right. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go. I somehow managed to create an extra point. Oh, look at that. It adds those in like that. Okay, that's funny. Oh, that's fine. Um, I want to spread these out more. I don't want them so close. Come on. Spread them out a bit. There we go. Let you out. Spread you out. Uh, remove that point. There we go. Spread that one out. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. No idea how that's going to look. We will see in game. Let's go. All right. Let's take this guy's shield down. Okay, the up was pretty cool, but the down was way too quick. And that's because of that three seconds that I set it to. Um, so I think what we're going to be doing, um, did we set that as, 
Yeah, and time over here. Let's go and make some more room, shall we? Let's make it half a second. Although I did like that effect of up. You show those little blips coming. Alright. Come on. There we go. Hi, Ivan. How are you tonight? I am totally not concentrating on where you're flying. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Let's go nice and close. Okay. I like how it comes back, but I don't like how it goes away. So, the big question right now... Hold on, I'm just going to go and shut that out because I don't like all the error messages that we're getting. Uh, friend of hope. Oh, we need that because that's where my curve is. So, I think that our curve that we've defined here... It's going all the way to zero. Maybe we should sustain that a bit longer. Because I wanted to just get really bright for a bit and then fade out. Like it's overpowered and then boom, it's gone. But that works really well. That ding, 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 ding. That really is those f f quick flashes to indicate that the shield's coming back. That, that I actually, I think that was really nice. Oh, look at that. That stayed two seconds. So let's see if that's now on five seconds. If that's, we might have overcorrected that now. That's always something to look out for. Whenever you change script values, defaults, sometimes um, Godot will still remember the overridden value on your script. All right, let's just see how we are with this. Okay. Now we see it overload, come back on. Overload, come back on. It's clipping with my, uh, <laughs> my battleship, but that's okay. That's also pretty cool because the shield goes down and gets pushed against the carrier. And then uh, when the shield comes back on, it gets pushed out again. There we go. It's gone. All right. Um... Okay, I think I I think I like it. I think I like what we've done here. Yeah. All right. How are we for time? Oh, it's, we've still got plenty of time left. So, because one of the other things that I was wondering about is actually give it, instead of it just fading out, it's giving it like a breakup effect. Um... But I think I kind of like this quite fine. Besides, in the heat of battle, you're not really going to, to notice anything special anyway, because it's just all going to happen too quickly. Um... I do think that we're getting our shields back up to quick. I don't mind that it's, you know, with a shield regen of 10, that it makes takes 10 seconds to so get the shield back to full health. But because our broken shield sets it to minus 10, I think that needs to be more. So I think that's something that we also should have 
a settable value for. So I'm going to make a new export var for that as well. Um, down shields, floats, and I'm going to actually make that point uh, minus 20, so that it's going to take basically two seconds to regain our shields. Boom. And that way, again, you know, for stronger enemies, we will be able to control that. 2 p.m. there. <laughs> ah, lucky you. No, it's uh, near my bedtime now. Well, we'll stream for at least an hour more. But I do want to see if we can end it at, uh, at 12. The last two streams, we, uh, we went uh, way past one in midnight. I thought that was a bit crazy. Mind you, we got a lot of stuff done. So there it goes. It's gone. And there it's back up. It's gone. Back up. Let's give it a little bit of time to actually regenerate some. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. And it's down again. Goodbye. And he's dead. Haha. <laughs> well, he's not fighting back, so that's pretty easy for him. Um, not to be mean. Shoot down our friendlies. Just want to see how it looks in a different color. Then it's back on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's push him out of the way. <laughs> All right. All good. Um, hmm. Okie dokie. I think that is probably more than enough to do on the shield for now. We've got a pretty cool shield effect going. We can now change the color of the shield so that our enemies have different color shields from our friends. Again, makes it easier to recognize things, which is always a nice thing to have. Um, we can set all the strengths now. We, can, we are regenerating our shields now, which is really cool. And we have some nice effects when the shield goes down. Um, and we're no longer using a viewport to calculate our whirly texture each and every time. Uh, we now just have a saved whirly texture, which uh, makes our life a lot easier. Um, hmm. And again, that's that's one of those things where, in due time, I'm, I really need to uh, I need to improve those add-ons that we can actually really create these things without them just being hacks. But for now, it's you know it does the it does the trick. It's good enough. Uh, I'm just going to close a few things here because it's getting a little bit full. So things that we. Right now, don't need. Probably I should do a close all from time to time, but this is good enough. Um, okay. So we got our we got our lasers working. We got our missiles working. And I still have to do a lot on the enemy AI. Um, but like I said last week, I want to do some reading up on stuff. Um, I really should keep my mic a bit closer sorry this is gonna make a bit of noise there you go i hope that's uh, that's better um yeah uh we might we might increase that time a bit but you know that's now a setting so you know we could we could make this a full minus 100 and it's going to take a full 10 seconds for the shields to come back up uh, unless you move all the power to the shields, of course. Let's see how that works. Just for fun. It's actually pretty satisfying shooting these shields. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that was pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, so now it takes a little longer for those shields to come back. Doesn't take that long to get them back down again, because obviously they come back up with no health. Um, but that's, you know, I think that's, that's a valid thing to do. All right. Okay. So. The thing that I'm wondering about right now... 
Should we show something already in here? Where are we? Select the target. Um, I don't have, I thought I had, yeah, oh, it's right up there. <laughs> it's very small, that's right. All right, maybe I should make sure that saves with uh, with my camera that close. Um, okay. So, that's our little thing that's roading in the corner when, when we've got a selected target. Um, Yeah, we'll just add a health bar here. A health bar and a shield bar. And I think we're just going to um We're just gonna add something simple for now, just so that it's visible. And then later on we'll make it a much nicer UI. But for now I just want something in there that we can see what is going on. Um all right. So, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to add a new spatial in here um, for showing our info. All right. Um, I'm just going to call that bars for now. Uh, that reminds me, I also want to have a look at when we take damage. Da -da -da. Any damage, damage given. Shield changed, shield changed, health changed. Okay, cool. So, um, um, all that I want to do here so if it goes down, it goes down, it's always in take damage. So here we're simply going to say if shield bigger than zero, um, then we're going to do that. But yeah, what I also want to do is if shield smaller than max shield, only then we're going to regenerate the shield. And that means that um, as soon as we now get our shield's health up, um we're gonna start sending um shield changed signals and we can react to that and same for the health health always goes down right you don't regain health uh once your shields are down you take damage that day damage stays uh, maybe at some point we'll you know have something that you uh, you can regain health i don't know but for now uh we are assuming that is going to be what it is so when we look at our script on our selected target, whenever we change the selected target, we're disconnecting from a number of things and we are connecting to those things when we get a new target. So we need to do some more on that. Um, so we're gonna go, how did I do that here? Clear target. Oh, that's okay. That's on the that. So well, let's, let's add the function So here. So we're going to do a shield changed function here. Now, are we sending the health there? Yes, we are, which is really cool. Exactly what we want. All right, shield changed, new value. I'm gonna pass that for now because we, we still need to make something work there. Um, and then health changed, new value. And we're gonna go past that. All right, so then over here, we obviously want to connect those signals. So select target, oh, selected target. And we always know because of this over here, we're always getting a friend or foe. So we know that we can connect to those signals. Although in this case, I don't think uh, Godot cares. Uh, don't ask me why sometimes I use double quotes and sometimes single quotes because it really doesn't matter. Um, anyway, we're going to go and connect to those signals so that whenever whenever there's a change to either of those values, that's when we react to it. So we're not constantly updating stuff, only updating when it actually requires us to update. So there we go. All right. 
Now here, target mass is visible is, did we? Yeah, so we need to do bars visible as well. So bars, oops, bars dot visible is false. There we go. Where do we make it visible again? Actually, in this case, I really don't care. If we somehow don't have a mesh, we don't have a mesh. So in this case, we actually want to show our bars. All right, cool. So we're connecting to those, but we also want to have our start values. Um, so that's going to be much simpler. And I'm just going to add that over here where we have our bars. We're just going to go and call our shield changed. And we're just going to say selected target dot shield boom it's gonna be really looking really funky for our uh, um, health changed selected targets dot health all right boom cool okay 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 um let's go have a quick look here yeah because we got max health max shield we got shield shield those are all export variables as well so you can see them all right cool all right so now we're going to add our two health bars here so we're going to have a mesh instance boom boom and this is going to go called shield. And we're going to go and create a bar or a cube in this case. Um, let's actually see, where is this? So I want this one to be slightly down. There we go. Sweet. And that one's way, 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 way too big, but that's fine. Uh, 0 to 0 1, 0 to 0 1, 0 to 0 1. Okay. There we have a bar. Okay. Now, I'm going to assume that the Z value is our orientation. So, there we go. Okay. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Okay. Uh, I just want to double check whether that is now positioned correctly because... We might be <laughs> having to turn that around. Um, for that, we need to go into here, into here, with this one. Can't remember. I think so. Um, let's do. I always forget what the keyboard. There we go. Do, 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 do. Perfect. So we have a nice, cool little floating bar there. Sweet. Yeah. Oops. There we go. Happy about that. Okay. Thing that I never like, um, well, never like is a strong word. Um, well, we can actually fix that, I think. Yes, we can. Uh, I'm going to add another helper spatial in here. Okay, spatial. There we go. I'm going to move that over here. Shield bar. Call that shield. And the reason I want to do that is because I actually want that to be um, over there. And I'll show in a minute why. So uh, we made this point one. So that means that we actually need to move this guy. Where is my transform? 0 0.5, no, 0 0.05, that's the wrong way, minus 0 0.05, over there, cool. And that means that this one I can translate to, oops, 0 0.5. So, um, now it's in the same position, but we have a point here. And that means that I can now use my Z scale to scale this bar. 
And that is the one that we're going to use. So we're not going to scale any of the other um, things. We're purely going to scale that Z value. And, uh, and that's going to help us. Um, okay. Now I want to go back to my shield bar because I want to... No, actually, I want to do that later. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this health. Not health. Health. And we're going to go and call this health bar. There we go. Um, okay. And obviously we want to move this one down a bit. Um, zero, zero, two. That's up. I said down a bit. There we go. And actually maybe I will go and move that down a little bit less. That's just our anchor point. Makes our life easy. And there's our two bars. Um, and the reason why I didn't want to create the material right away is because we can do two different materials here. Now, I didn't want to create a spatial material. I want a shader material because once again, I'm really overusing this thing, but um, I want to use that. Uh, where did I leave it? I forgot. Uh, it's not that one. Um... Where did I use my or leave my little fastenal shader? Misc. No, not my shield shader. Yeah, where did I leave it? Um, see, Misc. planet asteroid. No, I can't find it either. Bottles. No, that's where we looked a minute ago. Player. Here was a shade. There we go. Our fresnel emissive shader. Select the shader does not match any type. Oh, what? Um, really? Load. Oh, was that the material? Maybe. Um, yeah, I need to do that one. That was a material. Haha. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, um, hmm. I think we're going to override this one with the shield color of our um, our actual shield. But for now, we just need to give it a default value. That obviously needs to be one. Um, now, that's interesting. Because why? Because I was stupid enough. Let's go and copy this. Copy. I want that over on my override. So there we go. That thing now go clear. Boom. Because obviously I do want two separate um, bars here. Okay, so let's do the same thing on our health bar. So in this case, we set our overall material, new shader material. We again load in our Fresnel shader. Um, put that to one. Okay, so what are we going to be using? What are we going to be using for those two colors? Um, let's, see. let's go back to our fighter. Let's have a look at our, uh, no, not our fighter. Uh, we want to have a look at our, let's go look at our friendlies. Um, why is that one there? Yeah. Uh, where are we? Uh, is this one, this one? I think it's this one. There we go. Yeah. So we have a shoe color, and the other was our friend or foe color. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think we're just going to copy our shield color in. That's all right. So um, dum -dum -dum. okay, on ready var shield material is bars slash shield slash shield bar gets material service material zero so we just get that one because again we only have one here anyway so we don't have to worry about anything like that uh health material is bars health bar dot get service material zero so that way we get our two materials. 
And then here, boom, 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 we can say shield material.set shader param color uniform is going to be selected target dot um, shield color. And then we probably want to change our health bar color at some point in time, but I don't know yet what color we're going to give that. Um, I guess we could give it the same color. Let's see, where do we do that? Set mesh. Change it all to our selected color. I don't think I changed the color here, do I? Oh, here we go, set new color, shader. Okay, so I think that we're gonna use the same for health material, that's shader, param, color uniform, new color. So our health bar is going to have the same color as our, uh, our, our enemy or our, our plane, our target. And the shield is going to have the color of that target shield. Now, all that's left to do is to actually scale our our bars to uh, our health size. But instead of shade, uh, scaling the bar, we're scaling the spatial that contains it, and that makes sure that it's scaling nicely uh, from from what we now have decided to be the origin point instead of from the center of our uh, bar. So that's a nice little trick to uh, to do. So. Bars shield dot scale. That is going to be um, vector three. Because we're going to scale, scale all three axes, but we only want to scale the X. Actually, you know what? Let's make a life easy. I'm just going to make it very clear. We're just doing something on the X. So we're going to take the new value and we're going to divide that by selected targets dot max shield now just to be safe i actually want to add in a if we have a selected target we do this and else we just ignore our call boom and then here we always need to do the same thing for health but now we're going to divide that by max health and the last thing that we need to do i almost forgot this we need to go and clamp this between zero and one. Because remember, our shield is going to be negative when we destroyed it. We don't want our bar to go into the opposite direction. We just want it to be that. Um, I'm not going to hide it when it's zero. Um, I don't think that's really a point to that. Okay. Um, I think to demo this, we're going to use my headset this time because I want to be able to look at our target. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes. You'll know it soon enough. All right, so here's our first problem is we should be hiding them if we don't have anything selected. So there is our bad guys. Here's one of our good guys. There we go, boom, boom, boom. So we've got that guy selected. Oh, I'm getting little nice beeps again. Oops, I missed. There we go. Let's see it come back up. Yeah, I do need to change that beep. I don't actually like my uh, my beep. Um, there we go. It's coming back up, and we see our shield slowly regenerating. Let's give a bit of damage. Yeah, he's almost dead, and he is completely dead. Cool. All right. So let's make sure that when we don't have something selected. Our bar, actually our bar disappeared when it uh, got destroyed. So I think our only problem is that, yeah, the first time around, it's obviously not hiding it. And indeed, in our ready, we have our target bar. So we also want our bars visible to be false at our startup. All right, let's try that one more time. Let's see, so 
We got that guy selected. Very cool. So I can see what our uh, missiles do. Boom! That takes a lot of damage. It regenerates. I think it regenerates way too quickly because our missiles do quite a bit of damage. But it regenerates quite quickly. And we can see now that it's gone. Um, our bars are gone too. Oops, that was the wrong button. Alright, so. Oops, I've turned too much. Where are you? There we are. Alright, so. Looks like that one of our friendlies right now. I want to make sure that our logic also works on our friendlies. So that's all good. Our poor friendly has got a lot of damage. He's pretty damaged too. So, oh, your shield has come back. Alright, so. Where did all our bad guys go? Oh, I see two of them flying over there. I always lose the other two. Alright. Let's see if we can catch up to these guys. Let's see if we can take them out. Oh, there's the other guys. They're over there. Come on. Give me target lock. There we go. Okay, those were my last two missiles. And the second missile missed. Keep missing. Okay, I hit him. Alright, got that guy. Let's see if we can get him. <laughs> Ooh. He overshot me. Where are you, buddy? I think our enemies can turn too easily. Oh, he's got his shields back. How much damage have I got? Oh, hold on. Let's uh, actually select him. Alright. I'm actually standing still right now. Just so that I can hit him. So the shield is easy to hit. But him isn't. Okay, let's see if we can trick him. Where are you, buddy? There he is. Yeah, I definitely need to make the AI a little bit less uh, able to turn as quickly as he can. But we got him in the end anyway. Alrighty. Where is that guy? That guy's over there. Now, the funny thing is that my other two enemies always end up disappearing on me. So, I think that the track that I gave them to fly is uh, is way too big. They never appear back. So, uh, so they definitely fly out of range somewhere. But uh, we're not going to go and be able to find them. All right. So. Okay, then. Um, what can you do? Oh, we're in time right now. Oh, we're stuck in time. Okay, let me drink a little bit. How are you guys all going? Oh, why do I have a message retracted? Uh, I'm not keeping up my chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, looking nice. Thank you. Uh, may regenerate not slower, but with delay. Shields can heal a few seconds after not being hit. Yeah, that's possible. I definitely think that uh, it's worth to look, to think about some other strategies for our shield regeneration. Although, like I said, you know, in in a lot of these type of games, and I kind of like that approach. Um, shields do regenerate over time 
at a at a at a constant rate, and you can affect that rate depending on your power management in your um, in your craft. So I think that in that respect, we are on the right track with what we've done. I just think that uh, we need to tweak with the speed of regeneration. And obviously, as we if we lower the speed of regeneration, that also means that we can lower the um, the down shield starting value. So instead of having it for minus 100, like if we still want to have it regenerate in 10 seconds or come back up after 10 seconds, but we now have our regeneration set to um, two, that means that we have to have a starting value of minus 20 to bring it back up to uh, to a shield. And again, you know, once the shield comes back up, it's still a very weak shield. You'll, you know, one laser bolt and it's down again. Uh, my main problem just now was that um, my missiles do 50 damage, so they take away half the shield. But by the time that my second missile hits, the shield is, is re fully regenerated again. So, so that's one thing. The other thing that is potentially an idea is that when when, when we do t um, take shield damage, it doesn't start regenerating right away. There's always a delay before we regenerate after taking damage. But at the same time, I don't really like that idea um, because there is no... Um, you know, if you keep pumping energy into your shield, it would make sense that your shield, shields immediately start regenerating. I just think that the speed at which we're regenerating is too high. Um, and maybe just to react on that, maybe just, let's just half it. And then our down shield becomes, actually, I'm going to keep that in minus 20. So now it's four seconds. I think we changed that in the, uh, in the main friend or foe script. Yeah. So I want to put that back to the default. There we go. Just as a starting value. All right, so we got our bars now. Our bars work. Now, obviously, you know, UI-wise, this is really simple. They're just rectangles. Um, obviously, um, we'll want to do this uh, nicer at some point in time. At some point in time, I'm really going to start looking at designing the UI. And, you know, we might even change the way this works because one of the ideas that I have, instead of having, it like, a big bar, is to actually break it up into 10 small bars. And with every 10%, you lose, you just hide one more bar. Um, that's a really nice UI as well. We'll uh, we'll figure it out, right? It's uh, it's just a start. Um, for, for now, I just want the the concept to work. You know, we we um, we change the target that we see. We immediately see what the health of the target is, and the moment that the target takes damage, we can see the the bars react. And uh, improving that UI, making it look nicer. Um, it might even be at some point in time that will, you know, it might look different in different ships. We will, uh, we will see. But for now, we uh, we've got this. Another thing that I'm thinking about, obviously, is having the uh, um, the shield not be a bar, but having it be a circle around the ship. Because right now, you see two bars. You don't know what the individual bars mean. Um, so having the shield bar as really a circle, and where the thickness of the circle. Um, Gives you an indication of um, of the health of the target. That is a possibility. Um, again, we I'd, it's something to experiment with. And but for now, the principles are all here. We have our uh, selected target widget that we're using inside of our our cockpit, and we have all the logic in place right now for it to know the health and the health changes to the selected target. So. Uh, so that that is that is now all set up, and then you know we can we can make the look nice later. Yeah, so that's basically how it works right now by by making it negative. Um, once the shield goes down, I immediately go from from zero uh, health on the shield to minus twenty health, which means that you have to regenerate twenty health before the shield comes back up, and that gives you the. Um, the delay in the shield coming back up after it goes down so that it's not immediately coming back up. It's just the regeneration was so fast that as you hit things, um, it will regenerate before the next uh, the next missile came in. And that could have also meant that my missile damage strength is too little. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe the missile should have taken the shields down completely right away. Uh, those are all sort of the sort of things that we need to start tweaking. Um, 
All right. So. The next thing that I want to do, and this one's a little bit trickier um, in the sense of weapon choice. Um, right now, I still don't have a weapon selection system. So our primary fire is always our lasers. Our secondary fire is always our missiles. Um, but I want a aim indicator to see where we're aiming at. Um, and for that to be accurate, it needs to have a few bits of input. The first is, which, what are the properties of the weapons? The second is, what is the speed of my craft? Um, and the third is, how far away is my selected target? Um, provided we have a selected target. So let's start working on those. Now, when we look at that, I always want that to work with my primary weapons. And I always want to have the limitation that my primary weapons are particle weapons. So either you know, our laser beams, not really particles, but you know, we're faking it. Uh, our rail guns, all that sort of stuff. Things that we shoot. Um, um, you know, that, that, that don't have any AI or anything like that. They just go at a fixed speed forward. It makes that target information easier to, uh, to deal with, but also um, I think that makes just perfect sense. The problem now is getting information back about that because where is our weapon system? Here we go, weapons. Because when we look at our projectile, not the projectile uh, scene, but a projectile script, all that we specified here is that when we fire is that we call that set initial velocity with the velocity of our ship. And then we leave it up to the implementation, in this case, in our laser beam, um, to determine what that velocity will be. Okay. So let's just add a UI to that that gives us a value back um, so that we can um, we can call it but by default, we're just going to have it return blank. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Um, get, and I'm going to call that tar get target velocity. Oops. And I'm going to have that return a vector of three. And uh, I'm going to let that return an empty vector by default. So by default, this is not implemented. And it also means that in our target logic, once we know what our primary fire weapon is, if get target velocity doesn't return a value, um, then it's not gonna do anything. All right. Um, now, do we need to get that base velocity through? All right, is that gonna be smart? I think that it's gonna be smart because else we need to go and do something ourselves with that. So. Again, our base velocity is the speed of our craft because we're adding that velocity to whatever velocity we give our projectile. All right. So now in our laser beam is currently the only one where we're going to implement this. I'm going to go put that over here. And I'm actually going to go and copy that. And we're just going to return that function. There we go. And to make sure that we don't get any changes, if we ever change our code, we are just going to go and use that same function 
to get our initial velocity in our script, in our set initial velocity script. Cool. So now we have a get target velocity that we can call on our weapon um, and work with that. Okay. Now when we look at it, we've got two lasers firing at the same time. So they're both slightly apart. So this one, when it shoots, it's slightly off from the other one. Um, so in theory, we should have two little aim reticles, but I think that's that's a little overdoing it. Uh, I don't think that really makes makes much sense. So we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to basically use one weapon to to define this. And right now we're just going to hard code which weapon that is. It's going to be our first laser, our left laser. But once we start implementing a logic that we can do alternate fire and that sort of thing, we're going to be updating our logic to which which weapon we are we are going to be tracking. Okay. So going back to our player because this is only applicable to our player, right? So we're going to go to our main plane scene, so the one that um, that doesn't actually have our plane in there yet, because that's where we want that logic to be. I don't know, hold on, let me just check out. Leave the shield in running, but also leave the shield down off. Yeah, I think that's kind of, I'm not sure. I'm not sh quite sure if I follow you, uh, Ilya, because I think, you know, whether, whether you go from zero and then you say, you know, once it reaches 20%, then I turn it on, or whether we go to negative and we turn it on when it gets back to 1% health. It's, it's, it's kind of similar, I guess. I'm not sure. A good animation of a shield may be reacting to space dust in the direction you're moving. Uh, yeah, I could do something cool with that at some point. Um, again, for our enemy shields, um, the problem is that they, you know, you can see how often they are quite far away. You don't really see any detail on the shields anyway. It's really when you're very close. So I think doing an effect on the enemy shields um, or the other player shields is is overdoing it. But we haven't done anything in our craft to sort of get a sensation of speed. So getting an effect going at some point in time to mimic things hitting our shields, that is definitely um, definitely worth spending time on. Uh, but that's not for tonight though, because I got about half an hour um, left and I want to get my target reticles working. So we're gonna start adding that in here and I want to basically make that work the same way that we've got here. Now we've got a couple of uh, things already and we have to be a little bit careful because they, they're starting to get a little bit uh, uh, too similar while they are different things. So we've got to select the target, which is our little thing in the corner that shows us which um, guy we've selected. We've got our target indicator. That's the little square that we draw on top of the uh, selected um, target in the distance. That one we're going to be enhancing in a minute as well. Uh, because we're going to get a reticle going that shows us where we need to shoot for our laser beam to actually meet our target. So we're going to have something that extends forward to in the in the direction of travel of our uh, our enemy. Which reminds me that we also need to remove the debug logic from our missiles. Um, so that's something that we need to implement. Um, but what we are going doing right now is a new item. So I'm going to do that exactly the same way that we're doing that over here. We're going to create a new spatial, and I do not want that over there. I just want to go put that over there. And this is going to be called our target reticle. I probably spell that wrong. I want to make sure we spell that right. Reti reticle. Is that it? That's it. All right. And while we are on uh, on Google anyway, all right. Let's see. Tools, user rights. Uh, 
reuse with modification. Is there anything here that we can use? Or are we just going to create our own? No, we just need a circle. Yeah, like that one. Okay, what sort of side is this? Is this something that says that we can use? Free for commercial use, no attribution required. That's exactly what I want. Um, yeah, download. I am not a robot. Have I already got one over here? Okay. All right, so. All right, assets. And I always like to remember exactly where I get things from. So we're gonna say Pixabay. Uh, is there a username on here who created this thing? Because it's really nice of him that they they made it completely free. I like that. Uh, who made it? Who made it? Doesn't say who made it, so I um, can't say thank you to the guy. That's a shame. Or a girl. Or a person. Crosshairs. There we go. Boom. Cool. Now, one thing that is a bit of a downside is that these crosshairs are black, not white. Uh, which is always a bit of an annoyance. Because we want to color them. Now... I think we can work around that for now. But anyway, we've got them in our in our project right now. So we got our target reticle. Still not sure. Oh, really? Is that really what it's called? Yeah, reticle. Yeah, my English sometimes lets me down. So, all right. So we've got that in our script right now. And uh, as always, I want to go and save this as a branch. Um, going into instruments, target reticle scene, perfect. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna give this guy a script. Boom, now it's got scripts. And we're gonna go save. And we're gonna go save over here. All right, now. All right, so we need to tell this target reticle um, which weapon is going to be fired on our primary fire. Uh, that reminds me, did we actually take the time out? No, we haven't done that yet. Okay. So. We have our laser scene. Our weapon scene then says... Um, that's the weapon itself. It's, it has a pack screen for our projectile. That's actually interesting to know. Because we don't have our... Oh, that is interesting. So we actually need to create a um, a projectile purely to get information for it. That's, that's going to be funky. Um, I don't mind too much, but uh, okay. that's all good. Um, all right. Okay. Let's actually go and get all of this out of there. So... All right. Um, oh, yeah, that was why I was looking at that. So I did give that guy a class name, but I didn't give this guy a class name. So let's go and do that class name weapon. All right. So. Um, okay. Um, and actually, on our missile launcher and our laser, we don't have their own script, so everything is everything is actually captured by this guy. That is cool. All right. I get ready to go. All right. 
And the reason why I wanted to do that is so that we can do... No, actually, that can't be done. That always needs to be a no path. Okay. Are we going to do that? Or are we going to do this? No, we're going to do this like this. Weapon. Weapon. Okay, because there's no point in setting this in our notes. Because there's nothing we can really do with this. Um... In, in our editor. So there's, there's no no point in doing that. Um, so we're simply going to have a function here called set weapon, new weapon. And we're going to say if weapon is new weapon, then we're going to return. We're not going to set it to itself. Then we're going to say if weapon, if we currently have a weapon, then clean up. We don't have anything yet, but we, we will. Then we get our new weapon assigned. And then if we have a new weapon, we got to set up some stuff. Cool. Um, and I'm going to do an else here, because if we don't set a weapon, then obviously we need to do some things as well. Hi, Island Yan. Uh, I am too late. Yeah, by uh, by about three hours. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I saw it at the same time as last week, so... Uh, um, you missed a lot of fun so far. Uh, but we're not done yet for tonight, so uh, we're doing some last things, so you'll see what we've done so far in a minute. Okay, though. Cool. All right. So that's how we configure our weapon. All right. Now, we're also going to go and create a projectile. So normally, our projectile obviously gets instantiated um, so that we can actually shoot it. But in this case, we're actually going to create one uh, that we're not going to make part of our scene tree. So it's never going to get um, initialized fully. Um, but it should be enough to call our um, get velocity uh, when we need to call it. So, um, obviously, the first thing that we're going to do over here is projectile oh q3 oh no that needs to be a oh, q3 and then projectile is null so we need to get rid of our projectile boom and in this case we need to go and create a new projectile um what's going to be if weapon dots is it this one Hold on, let me double check. Um, where's my weapon? That's, yeah, so we've got a pack scene there, projectile. So if we have that one, we're gonna say projectile is weapon dot projectile dot instance. There we go. And that will create a new instance. So our weapon, boom. Um, creates an instance of our projectile. Not to shoot, but purely to get info from. Now, as far as I'm aware, as long as we don't add this into our scene tree, as long as we don't add this as a child node to anything, it should stay dormant. It shouldn't do anything. and it's, It shouldn't be added to our physics or anything like that, because there is no, uh, no info for it to do that. But if it does, we're going to have to do a little bit extra to make sure that our projectile doesn't become active until it's actually shot. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. We might need to improve that. But now we have a method of telling our target reticle for which weapon it needs to show our target reticle. For now, however, and we can't do that over here. This is something that we need to do in our main plane script. 
Uh, we're just going to hard code that to one of our laser weapons. Um, but once we have logic here um, where we can cycle through our primary weapons, that's when that logic moves into our main plane script um, where it's just going to go through our hard points and figure out, you know, because there's going to be a whole bunch of logic. Um, actually, that's a good point. We are doing that here anyway. So... And a lock. That's all on our main thing. I'm just wondering if. Uh... No, we're just gonna put it in here. For now. So where where is our main ship? Here we go. Um, this guy. That still has our plane script. Okay, that's interesting. So I do need to find what the first hard point is. That's fine. If that's what I need to do for now, then that is what we need to do for now. That's good. All right, so let's go back to this guy. Target reticle. So we're gonna go to our ready over here. Just for now, assign our first weapon to our Target. So eventually you'll make that work a bit nicer. Um, so for this, we're going to do hard points in hard points dot get children. So we're going to loop through all our hard points. And then here for weapon in hard points get children. So we go through all our weapons and now I do need to go and have a look at here our fire weapon scripts where are you here we go yep exactly and here we're just going to see if it's our primary the primary fire this is what you get when you when you don't uh, yeah primary fire <laughs> when you haven't looked at this code for a while. So if we find this one, we are simply going to say target radical dot set weapon weapon and then we return. So that's the last thing that we do in uh, in our ready function because else we would never return uh, or we would never get uh, you know every, the, the rest of this function executed. Um, but it's just a placeholder just to get that weapon set to our target reticle. So now our target reticle is aware of that. Now again, our uh, Godot starts really complaining once you do that. So let's go and close this off. Is that good enough? I think so. Um, so yeah, so we should be setting this up. We should therefore be getting our projectile here. Now it's a matter of positioning our actual target reticle. So that means that we actually need a target reticle. And for that, we're going to add a mesh instance. And I'm just going to go call that radical. Um, and that is going to become a quad mesh. There we go. As this may be a way to make big quad mesh, but we will soon see. And then we're going to add a material to this. And this is going to, we're going to start with a shader material. We're probably going to go and have some fun. Hiya, Dragio. Good morning. Well, good night for me, but good morning for you. <laughs> uh, no, not a shader. Spatial material. Always mix those two up. All right. So this one's first of all going to be unshaded. It's also going to be transparent. Um, we're going to go and render this as fixed size. So it's not going to be... Um, it's a really cool setting. I, I really, I, I've used that for a few things right now. Um, it just means that this thing is always going to be looking the same size, regardless of how close or how far away we are. It's, it's such a cool setting. Um, all right. So uh, this guy is going to be a billboard. 
so that's always facing the camera. There's a big discussion going on right now on the VR channel about uh, billboards and some of the problems that we have with billboards in VR. Um, but that's a discussion for another day. For this purpose, it's fine. We don't really need anything more here. All right, so assets, uh, where is that new folder that we just created? Pixabay, crosshair, and there we go. We got a crosshair, which unfortunately is the wrong color. Okay, so, okay. Now. Um, I'm just having a quick look through this. Whether there's anything more that I want to do here. I'm going to size this in a minute, um, just using uh, um, the size of our reticle or the size of our um, quad. But I want to make sure before I take the next step that this is all correctly set. Yes, it is. All right, cool. So, all righty. What I'm now going to do is I am going to change this to a shader material. Boom. There we go. Sweet. Okay. And now we're going to go and edit the shader material. Now, what I really like is that by default, this thing's now, or we've now told this to be an unshaded material, and we still get all of these things in there. Okay, boom. So we don't need those guys. We don't need any of these. These are all default. So I'm just going to get out the things that I don't want. I do want my albedo. I do need my texture, but we're going to do something special with the albedo in a minute. Um, I don't care about my specular. I don't care about my metallic. I don't care about my roughness. I don't care about my point size. I don't get any of the UV things. So they're all going to go. So we're not going to scale our UV. This is very important because this is all the logic for our projection stuff. So that is cool. And we're going to leave that the way that it is. There we go. We are not going to care about our metallic. We're not going to care about our roughness. We're not going to care about our specular. There we go. So we've got our UV. And I don't actually care about putting that into a variable we're just going to take that out and what we're going to be doing right now is we are going to be ignoring the color of our texture we're only interested in the alpha of our texture and that now has turned our texture nicely right now interestingly enough for some reason okay so now we screwed up there <laughs> We removed something too many, or we forgot to actually set something up in our billboard. Did we now? Yeah, because it's got a Y billboard right now. Okay, so let's start over. <laughs> Oops. Um, spatial material, flags, transparent, unshaded, fixed size, parameters, Oh yeah, I said why but okay, we're gonna make that a particle billboard. Um We're not gonna keep the scale because we're not doing anything with the scale. We're gonna just change the size of that thing. Albedo, load, pixabay, that guy. And I think that was everything that we were doing. Cool. Um so same thing, convert it to shader material, boom. Go into the shader material. Let's go and get rid of everything that we don't need. Because we're not shading this thing. So no point in having the shading values, oops. Uh, we do want those guys. We don't want him, him, him. Why do we have those? What are those for? No idea. Why do we have animation frames? I have no idea. Is that because we did the particle thing? 
What is that used for? To calculate the UV. I think all of that can go. Goodbye, particle frame stuff. Cool. Dun 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 dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. There we go. All right. That's so good. Whether we get close or not, it stays the same size. All right. Cool. All right. So, oops. Um, that might be too big. We will soon see. Um, but that's why we're going to keep it as. All right. Cool. Okay, um, cool. All right, first things first, we're going to add a ready function, and in our ready function, I'm going to hide my radical. I'm also going to hide my oops, heretical if we don't have a weapon selected, so that's good. Um, and now we're going to update its position in our process function. So we're going to do that. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on which way you look at it. Um, Um, when you add a process function, set process automatically gets turned uh, on, but we don't want that. We only want to run our process function if we actually have a weapon selected. So same thing here, but in this case, we're going to say true. So if we have a weapon selected, we're going to run our process function. If we don't have a weapon selected, we're not going to run a process function. So in our process function, and actually, I think I'm going to show our reticle here, but I might change that because I'm thinking that potentially if we don't have um, if we don't have the right info here, um, we might uh, we might do something with that. OK, so um, now we haven't got a target info here yet. So. We're going to hard code our target distance to 500 meters for now. That's something that we need to update once we have a target. And potentially, we're going to do that in a way that if we have a target, we're going to update that. And if we don't have a target, um, then we hard code that to 500, something like that. But for now, it's just going to be 500. So the next thing that we need to know is we need to know the velocity of our projectile if we were to fire it right now. So. Um, we have our projectile here, so obviously if projectile, boom, also there's no point. Um, that's actually a good point. Um, yeah, go with that. Okay, if projectile, um, then we need to say uh, velocity is projectile dot get. I don't remember what we call that. All right, where are you? Projectile. Set initial. Get target velocity, of course. Target velocity. Boom. Um, and we need to give that the default velocity. So that's another one. <coughs> um, I think we're going to go and cheat a little bit, and we're just going to go and call get parent. We know that our parent is always supposed to be. Um, our player, else it's in the wrong place. Um, so I think we can quite safely do that. Uh, do we have getters? I think we yeah get velocity. I think it's that one. Let's see. Delta position. Hold on. Delta and delta. Velocity. 
velocity is just the float delta position. Really? And that's all that I'm using delta for? Hmm. I think I want to have a velocity in uh, stored here as well. I'm surprised that I haven't done that. So when we're firing our weapons, where do we do that? We can handle input, block, handle fire input, so that's where we're firing, send delta through, handle fire input delta is going over there. You know what? I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you out. Uh, I am going to take you out. That's all good. Okay. Now, that means that we also, there's one more place that we need to do that. So, yeah, that's obviously going to go and complain because we haven't changed that in here yet. Okay, so what I now want to do over here is actually have our base velocity as a, um, a value, which means right now we can go and do this is delta position divided by delta. So that's our um, our actual velocity per second. And that means that we can actually go and change this because that would be the same value to just base velocity length. So now we have both the velocity as a vector and as a speed indicator. Cool. All right. That now also means that with that in hand, when we look at our fire weapons, we no longer need delta here because now we have our base velocity over here. There we go. Sweet. Okay. Now there's one more thing that we need to change, which is in our attack targets because this is where our um, NPC is firing. And we don't need to send anything in here because it's now contained within our fire weapons. Sweet. Okay, so hopefully we haven't broken anything. Hopefully that does everything that we needed to do. Yeah, the uh, building something as a spatial material and then converting it to a shader material. First of all, you can optimize it that way. You know, you can take out all the um, all the clutter that you don't really need. Uh, but also, it's a really good tool to um, to learn how um, how shaders work because there's quite a lot of standard stuff in there. Um, but it also means that you know you you set up ninety percent and then you tweak it a little bit to what you need. Like for instance, ignoring the color, what I just did in the texture. All right, so this should now all work. Um, let's go back to friend of foe. Um, which also means that here we turn the velocity as a vector. Funk get base velocity for three, because obviously we need to be able to access that. There we go. Boom. Sweet. So now in our target rectangle over here, we're just going to call get parent get base velocity. And that's a little dirty because if we uh, 
accidentally put this thing on the wrong thing. That's not going to be the right type, but uh, um, I don't want to refactor that right now. We're going to do that at some point. I'll add some checks in to make sure that works. All right, so now we have a velocity here of our projectile, uh, which simply means that we can now say radical dot global transform dot origin is, and this is again, slightly off because we are now calculating it from the center of our uh, MP, or of our character instead of the center of our weapon. Although I guess, no, we could actually do that. We can actually say weapon dot uh, global transform dot origin plus velocity times uh, uh, let me think, hang on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, time to target, which we haven't got yet. Uh, because we need to see how long would it, you know, if, if we would be perfectly shooting our enemy, we're going to figure out, okay, how long would it tr take for that bullet to travel to that enemy? But we're now going to see how far or where does the bullet get if it travels for that amount of time along its velocity curve. So we now need to do here a var time to target is target distance divided by um, length. So we're going to get the speed, um, the speed at which it travels. So now all that we need to do is actually fix up how we calculate that target distance. But let's have a look if we uh, if we did this right or if we screwed this up. Because now our reticle should always be at a distance of 500 from where our projectile would normally hit if it was fired out of our gun. Okay, we have a error message. All right. Get base velocity on rigid body plane. Where is that coming from? Base velocity. Yep. Let's see if that works better. Seems to be running. Ooh, and our target reticle is way too big. And we do have our beautiful um, Okay, we do have our our bug in that. Alright, that's alright. Alright. Alright, so it's definitely not working the way that it should be. Okay. All right, so we got a few things that don't work properly. But we're getting close. Okay, so why is this so big? Go away. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this thing is a whole lot smaller. Whoa, don't hold on to the ground, please. Um, let's start by, oops, that's not what I had in mind. There we go. So much smaller, and that will hopefully also make the uh, the parallax thing not as pronounced. But if it does, if that keeps being a problem, there's other ways to uh, to deal with this. Um, okay.
So. Hmm. <laughs> okay. That's our problem. Weapon, uh, weapon, weapon. Where are we? Weapon. Okay, how are we going to solve that? Because the problem is that we, here we are adding our child. Trout, yeah, we're doing that. I wonder if you if we can set global transform even though it hasn't it, it doesn't have a parent. I think that would still work because it's just not going to get a value from the parent. Okay, let's just see if that works. It's it's ugly, but it's in theory it should work. Um, which means we should be doing that over here, projectile, dot global transform is weapon global transform. And here I'm not going to worry about spawn point because that is just such a small distance on the scale of things. That's not going to make a real problem. Okay. Let's see if that's enough for it to work or whether it's going to complain the fact that it doesn't have a parent and therefore it can't set the global transform. It's very possible. Um, the other thing that we're probably going to be doing here is make sure that this is orientated correctly towards the camera. We might take out the billboard logic, but we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And that might mean having to do that trick with the shader another time because the problem that I have is that as I'm turning my head, that is reorientating the um, the reticle. Also, don't, what I don't like is this. I want to take that out. But our reticle is still nowhere in the space where it should be. And again, I think that has got everything to do with the fact that global transform cannot be set. Now, one of the things that might work is if we set transform, that will position it properly because it doesn't have a parent, so I can't do that. Um, but grabbing the global transform might still work. So that's something that we, is also worth a try. Okay. Okay. So. Let's have a quick look at this. Okay, I think it would just be a matter of taking that out, but I'm not going to risk it because it's easier to just redo it. So we're going to go back to the spatial material for this guy. Very good. Unshaded. Fixed size. Oh, transparent. Unshaded. Fixed size. Now we're going to give it our image again. Boom. 
Where are you? Oh yeah, it's still there. It's just very small. It's only visible from the side. Very good. That's all that I wanted to see. But we're not going to go and change it to a billboard. We're just going to leave it like this. All right, cool. So, um, go back. Convert the shading material. Boom. Boom. That makes a much smaller thing. Again, take out all the things that we don't care about because we're not shading. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Take all these out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's see. So here we can see that indeed it's that's our scale adjustment. Very cool. Don't care about you. Not EV, UV. Um, don't care about you. Don't care about you. Boom. Simple shader. All right. Now. I think as a result of this, it has become too small. Oh, there we go. See, we can't see it. It's probably good enough size. So now the problem is that obviously, well, actually with this, because we are moving it forward, it would still be sort of okay. Um, but we can make it much easier by just saying radical dot look at. Um, now, do we have... Yeah, we're just going to go use this one. Um, I just want to go and uh, store this instead of accessing it twice. And just doing a look at. Now, up vector really doesn't matter. Actually... Do I want that? Maybe what we're just going to do is this transform. And our weapon region. Can't type. So you're going to use that twice. Okay, so now we're going to orient it based on the whatever is up in relationship to our weapon, so that if we turn our ship, our reticle turns with us. So now our reticle should always be uh, should always be facing our weapon, but because we are so close in, in relationship to the whole um, space, that is fine. That is more than enough. Obviously, I could use my parents global transform for this, but I don't think I really care too much about that. All right. Right, so we get our target velocity. That's how, how fast. Actually, I want to go and rename that to target velocity to make it clear. And that's, well, the target velocity for the projectile. <laughs> uh, so that's just time to target, so that shouldn't matter. Okay, it should just be a float. And here we are multiplying that by that. So unless there's something wrong with get parent bit base velocity, this should work. Um, okay, let's have a look and see if this makes sense. And else we are going to have to make our projectile a child of us. Or of a weapon just to have it work and we need to make sure that it doesn't do anything collision wise okay our reticle is completely gone now the question is is that because it's too small or is that indeed that we now do something that it can't do anything with okay 
I think it's that last one. I think the problem that we have is as long as it's not a child, it is not going to work. Okay. Where's my uh, my laser beam? Here it is. Okay. I think we're gonna make life a little easier. Take this out. There we go. We're just going to make it return the speed. And again, this uh, this now really means that um, floats. Okay, because this works around the whole problem. All right, so um, I'm gonna go move these up. There we go. Boom. We don't care about you anymore. Now we're gonna get a target velocity as an actual speed. So here we're now going to calculate the actual um, oh, wait. that means that I'm going to go and move that over here. And now I'm going to add weapon transform dot no bases dot z times that. So that should be our exact same calculation. And that's why I don't didn't really like this. Because that makes the assumption that that is always our calculation. And then obviously if we have some other way to determine our initial velocity, uh, say for a rail gun or something like that, um, then that doesn't work. But I think it's good enough. Okay. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what it does. Oh, all right, well, I'm still lost my reticle for some reason. Hmm. Now that is possible because we might actually let's um, let's change that on the shader just in case that's our problem because we might be seeing it from the wrong side right that's always possible um, okay sure. oh, no so that becomes call disabled. Now we can see it from both sides. Let's see if that was our problem. It's very possible because um, I didn't specifically check whether, there we go, that was exactly what my problem was. Okay. Looks kind of accurate. Slightly off though. No, it is good.
remember is that I am um, I'm accelerating my rotation, and that means that by the time that uh, that we've rotated away, obviously, well, we might have actually shot where the reticle was at that point in time, but our reticle has moved, so uh, that's probably good. So our reticle is still too big, so we're gonna make that smaller. Boom. Let's start with that. Um. To make our default distance a little bit further. Yeah. So yeah, I think that was okay. Yeah, kind of what it needs to do. I didn't like how big it was. That's probably a lot better. Keep going. Okay, <laughs> um, it's getting behind stuff. There was a setting for that too. All right, let's have a look. Um, okay, now I'm going to make my life a little easier. Just create a new mesh instance. Uh, where are you? Bum, 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 bum. Transform, no. Uh, oh yeah, it's over there. Uh, so spatial material. Let's find what that tick box was. Um, can't remember. Did I do it like that? I might have. Um, it's in the, my target indicator where I've done that. So target lock here. This guy. Oh, look at that. I've actually got this as a shade or two. Oh, boom. So what did I do? Death draw never. Kill disable. Death, death, disable. Okay. Just go and copy this stuff. Makes life easier. I don't need that. Because now I know what it needs to be. Let me go and put this in. Say death draw never. And that test disabled. And because it's a transparent, um, okay, that's weird. What's the name? Was there one thing more in there that I missed? Those are all not important. Okay. What did I miss here? Let's just see if we actually see it. Yes. Might just be because of the smaller than else. Yeah, it's there. Suddenly notice how small it actually is on on the on the screen. It's actually quite nicely visible in uh, inside here. So the reason I did that is now when even even if it should be clipping behind or you know hidden behind the uh, the carrier, it's not always drawing. And you can only do that successfully when it is a um, a transparent material. But yeah, I'm not sure if I like the image that we're using for this. But we've got something that allows us to aim where we're shooting. Let's see if that happens or helps for our 
enemies if we can find out where these guys have flown off to. Oh, there they are. Now, obviously, this is where we're not hitting because they won't be there by the time this goes. Oh. Ah. Okay, there we go. Alright. Alright. So, the other thing that we need to do, but I think that is going to be for next time. Is uh, I have also a radical in front of. Well, our uh, our enemies, so that we can see what we need to aim for. Because obviously, right now, our radical will show where our lasers will hit after they travel that amount of time. Um, which you know, if we were shooting at static objects, would give us a pretty accurate. Um, not moving in time? Well, stop moving in time. I was probably not moving in time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, uh, um, right now, you know, obviously our reticle will, uh, uh, will show where our bolts will hit. So if we would be shooting at static objects, it, they would actually hit, um, where our reticle is, provided that uh, we would have the distance to target correct. So right now it's fixed at a at a thousand meters forward. Um, so in that respect, it is not accurate enough. But once we have our target selected and we adjust it as a result, then we can deal with that. Uh, but the second thing that we need to do is with that velocity is um, calculate where um, where our target is going to be in that amount of time and then have a second reticle in front of our target now originally I was planning to do that on our selected target thing but I, th I think I'm going to actually do that here um, so that we actually position two reticles one reticle where is our um, our laser going to be if it travels for the time that it would you know hit our target and the other reticle being how far ahead is our target going to be if it keeps moving for that amount of time um, in its in its current direction and then when the two reticles overlap in theory you should hit your target um, so that is still something that we need to add in here but it's 1230 and I think um, I think we're going to leave that either for next week or it, that is one of the things that I'll be doing during the week to sort of finish this and round this off. And then uh, I'll go through what I came up with next week. So, um, cool. Um, I really is starting to feel that we have nearly all the ingredients ready for our player character for our player ship to work because we've got our missiles right now we've got a targeting system we've got our shooting system um we've got some effects of what we hit we've got most of our instruments working that we need right now i think the uh the next step for completing our um our player ship is that um that power balance uh, logic that we need. I actually need to start making a list, I think, and, and see what are all the things that I still need to implement um, before our player is really, you know, ready to to fly around and do everything that the ship needs to do. Um, I think we're getting pretty close to, to all the important stuff. So, yeah, um... Yeah, I think I think we're actually getting pretty close to that. That's pretty cool. Um, still a lot of work to do on the AI, the NPC AI. Uh, I still want to move or you know implement the AI code uh, to be used in the missiles as well, so that that has the same structure. 
Um, and that should hopefully allow us to uh, to reuse more and more parts. Um, it's definitely a lot of cleanup that we need to do, I think, just to uh, to get some of the code to uh, to sort of. As, 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 as I feel that there's too much duplication in some some areas, so that's something that I need to start spending time with. Um. Yeah, let's actually rename this to aim radical. So we're, we're yeah, I think we're gonna add both radicals in here, and then do a target radical. Once we also set our target here. Okay, I think that works. And obviously, if we don't have a target, we're still going to show our aim reticle because that's where we're aiming. Um, but I also think that I'm just going to I'm I'm going to replace that image with just a simple circle um, because we lose all the detail at that size anyway. So there's no point in keeping that detail in there. Oh yeah, the other thing that we need to work on is is weapon cycling. That is, you know, the weapon selection and weapon cycling. That's going to be important as well. Uh, that's going to be interesting as well when you think that, you know, I've been doing this on my on my joystick, and that has a lot of buttons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, I think twelve buttons on this thing. So it's quite, you know, I've got quite a lot of buttons left over to do selections with. But um, if you play this game on a gamepad or play this game, well, maybe even with the Oculus controllers or the Valve controllers or, you know, whatever controls you have, um, we might run out of buttons real quick. So that's something that I think I need to think about as well, is how to solve that one. Um, and not rely on the fact that I've got a joystick with a lot of buttons that uh, you can easily touch by feel and know what you're uh, what you're doing because that's of course the big problem that you have. You've got your headset on, you can't actually see the device that you're using to control the ship with. Um, so you really, you know, as a game designer, you are assuming that the person playing your game is using a control device that they are familiar with. To the extent that they don't have to look at the device in order to use it properly and know how to touch the buttons. And that does leave some design constraints. It's going to be interesting to uh, to deal with those. Um, obviously, that also means that at some point we need to start looking at an interface for the, uh, the player to configure their controls. Um, and that's going to be interesting because I actually want that to be dual. Um, I want it to be an in VR version of that, but I also want to have um, a version that purely works on a desktop. You know, if you somehow screw up your controller configuration and you can no longer do certain actions in uh, within VR, you at least can still do some things on the desktop to fix it up. So, um, so that's something that we need to start looking at as well. All right. I think I'm going to leave it there because uh, it is uh, 40 past 12 for me. Um, I've already gone half an hour more than I was planning to go. Um, so yeah, thank you all again for watching uh, and uh, bearing with me through this journey. Um, I hope it was interesting tonight. I, I think we did a lot of fun things. Um, I'm really happy with how the shield turned out. So, um, so yeah, that was probably my favorite thing to do for uh, for this whole session um so yeah um i don't see anything happening in chat anymore i hope that doesn't mean that chat isn't working anymore <laughs> um all right um leave some comments if you have any more questions um yeah i think that's uh, that's gonna be it for tonight um i'm, I'm hoping that uh, during the week um i'll have some news about tutorials that i'm working on uh, it's been a a little bit slow going for me because of work um, but i'm hoping to uh, to catch up speed again pretty soon um 
And yeah, like I said way in the beginning, there's two tutorials that I'm planning to do. One is on the action system in OpenVR, now that I've got it to a point that I'm really happy. Um, and the other one is the next section in my um, in my uh, object, object interaction tutorial. Um, one thing that I want to do there, probably pretty quickly, I'm thinking about maybe Sunday, but don't hold me uh, on it because I'm not quite sure how things will go with my family this weekend. Um, but I'm thinking about doing a ad hoc live stream. I said that last week, but it sort of fell through this uh, during the week with work. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe Sunday night. Don't hold me to it. But you know, I'm about 50% sure um, Sunday night we might do an extra stream where I'm just going to be doing some experimentation uh, in preparing that tutorial because there's still a few things that I need to figure out how to do. Uh, I've got some ideas. But so far, the experiments they have done, um, they had some really weird side effects. Uh, so we'll go through those and we'll just start experimenting with some joints and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and yeah, my goal there is to get a tutorial going where we do things like open doors and open cupboards, that sort of stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Um, Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a great day, if it's still day for you, and also a good night, uh, if it's like uh, for me, night time for you guys. Um, and um, see you next week. Have a good night. Bye-bye.